Jackson, I see here in my notes from our preliminary uh, session that you've been married for over 22 years. Mm -hmm. So tell me, why are you here? Well, I can answer that. Okay. No, nah, I'm not very confident. Nah, I, don't, I obviously don't even know you, but I'm just like, I don't know her. Just go in. Because my wife, after 22 years of marriage and fidelity, mm -hmm. decided to go out and get us up a little old job and leave our house and mess up our happy home. No, no, that, that, that's not why we're here. We're here because my husband is the most inflexible man in the whole entire world, and his idea of a romance is six pumps and to marry a little friend, then I'd have married Apollonia or Vanity or one of them, okay? I thought I was marrying a good Christian woman. Like, well, you married Camille. And me liking sex, wanting sex, wanting to experiment with sex with my husband does not void my Christianity. Now, excuse me for wanting sex. Now, if you want to read about it in the Bible, you can always open up the Songs of Solomon because it's very sensual and it, I read it a lot and it okay. makes okay. me feel well, away. What chapter is it? I don't know what chapter exactly. is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But it, it makes me feel away. I'm a flower. Away. You're what? I'm a flower. Doctor. Will you please tell my wife she's not a flower? She's yes, white. I'm a flower. I'm a flower and a blossom. What, what kind of flower are you? A sunflower? There ain't no sun in here. Sunflower. <laughs> what is that? That's a lot of So, Mrs. Jones, how can I help you? You can't, but you can help my husband. He has a problem with money. What kind of problem with money? And I don't know how to keep any kind of problem. Oh, come on, say, but that's not fair. Well, Mr. Jones, why do you think you're here? To save my marriage. And why do you think it needs saving? Well, we've made mistakes in the past, and we want to... Well, the first step to reconciliation is accountability. So, what mistakes have you made? Hmm. It's best to let sleep the dogs lie. Mm -hmm. Look, I love my wife, and I'm willing to do whatever is necessary to fix our problem. That's a great first step. How about you, Mrs. Jones? Are you willing to take that step? I I'm sorry, what? Are you willing to do anything? I'm here, aren't I? Okay. That is true. Do you have the air on? Because it's terribly hot in here. I can manage to make some changes. That'll be great. That'll be great. Okay. <laughs> the light's green, David. The light is green, David. Can you go? There's people behind us. Why go if you're not even gonna try? Drive, David. Not until you tell me what I've done to turn you into this. Maybe this is who I've always been. David. Mrs. Anson, what brings you here to see me? Oh, um, I, I don't know. I just think that maybe um, Samuel and I are losing something. Really? Like what? Um, I don't know. Maybe a little of the magic? Well, the magic that happens during courtship and dating has to be worked on for marriage. Yeah, you're right. I was probably making a big deal out of nothing. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. Anson. Don't dismiss your feelings so quickly. Mr. Anson? Mr. Anson? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So what are you feeling about uh, what your wife is doing? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we've been married a year. I mean, in my mind, we're still in the honeymoon. Well, I see that. <laughs> so I don't think we have a problem. Well, of course not. Of course not, Daniel. Mrs. Anderson? Well, I mean, but you know what? Well, you can think about it. You're right. You're right. No, it's no. still a honeymoon for you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Still a honeymoon for both of us. What are you doing? That, that was just a friend. That was all. Marsh, Marsh, Marsh. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hi. How are you this evening? Good. How are you? Good. 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 I want to personally welcome you all to my seminar, Before You Say I Do. Are you excited? Yeah. Great. Let me tell you something. You are all very, very lucky to be here. Do you want to know why? Why? Because you're all headed for divorce court. Excuse me? Uh, uh, but we're not even married yet. Right. You know what? You, the media, everybody makes us feel like we're destined to fail. Like marriage is antiquated or useless. No one can control whether our marriages fail or succeed. Sure they can. Look, you got already got everybody from the Senate to the pulpit trying to tell us what we can and can't do in our houses, in our bedroom. Someone needs to regulate this mess. Clearly, marriages aren't what they used to be. Clearly. You know, I think we're in the wrong class. Well, I think you need to sit down. Oh, we were just going to go outside. Zip it and sit. Thank you. Now. Marriages fail for one reason and one reason only. Yeah, because I really need you to sit down. Thank you. As I was saying, marriages fail because couples like you fail to prepare, which is where I come in. Now, I have these workbooks that I'm going to pass out to you, and I would like you to fill them out thoroughly, read them thoroughly, get comfortable, because tonight is going to be a very, very long night. Get started on that. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. 
I want to welcome you to my Malibu home. Uh, this is Joe. He, and he keeps the peace. Joe, did everyone sign the confidentiality agreement? Great. All right. Well, every year I choose three couples from my practice to attend the annual Find the Fire Retreat. And this year I have chosen you. You will learn more about yourselves in three days than you have since you have known each other. And trust me, your survival is not guaranteed. 75% of marriages are bad ones. Isn't that more closer to 50%? That's the number that usually typically ends in divorce. There's another 25% that live in what I call the three degrees of hell. You know, my parents lived in a loveless marriage for over 32 years. And when my father died, my mother, she didn't even cry until she realized that there was no one to eat her dinner every night. I actually didn't even believe in marriage. Anyway, um, why don't you guys make your way to the dining room for lunch, get comfortable, and I will meet you at the pool later. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Since we're all gonna be stuck here all weekend, why don't we get to know each other? Okay. Um, my name's Ethel Jackson. Jackson. I'm from Turnkey, Alabama, uh, just southeast of Hill. And uh, I'm Jackson Cleaner, and we do uh, commercial jack turn cleaning. And that's my lovely wife, Camille, and she's from Terminal Hill. <laughs> we the Jacksons, yeah. Camille, what do you do? Oh, well, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I, but I'm trying to change that. But I'm a stay-at-home mom now. And we have four kids. We have Junior, he's 21. And I know y'all got me in like 21, but we started very early, I was 19. And so we have Junior, and we have Sherry, she's 19, and Taylor, he's 17, and Nathaniel is 15. See, he was our little special surprise. He got frisky one night. <laughs> in <that> bed. <laughs> it was fun. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Marcia Anson, and this is my husband, Daniel. What's going on? Um, We've been married for uh, about a year now, and I own a little flower shop on the west side. Um, I play football most of my life. I was uh, All-State my senior year in high school, and I was MVP three consecutive championship years before that. I knew I recognized you. Well, I was always in the newspaper. You were in some freak accident after receiving a full ride from the University of Washington. Something about um, drunk driving. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, I was in an accident, blew out my knee, scholarship was pulled, and I just couldn't play football after that. So what you do now? Uh, now I sell insurance bills to us. <clears throat> well, I'm David Jones. I own a brokerage house that specializes in small commercial business projects. And my wife and I have two beautiful children, our son Aaron and our daughter Tiffany. I am every man's fantasy and every woman's worst nightmare. I can work a business deal like a double jointed stripper can work a pole. I'm double degreed, <coughs> Oxford educated, and I work corporate America with enough hotness to melt lava. I am what they teach young girls to be when they grow up. Okay, that is just Satan's headlighting right there. I I'm gonna break you out of candy too. What do I have to do to get some food around here? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Jones, can you join me over here for a moment, please? Sure. Great. I, uh, I want to talk to you all about trust. What's with the handcuffs? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. It's about trusting me and two, the trust he's done. Okay, but the handcuffs, are they necessary? They are necessary because this is actually an exercise. <laughs> Now jump in I, I can't! You I, actually can't or you won't? I don't, I don't know how to swim! She's a slut! Somebody save him! Oh my god, he's gonna die! Save Are you crazy? Look, your wife was supposed to save you, but she said she couldn't swim. I did not say that. I said I did not like to swim. You were on the swim team! Uh, honey, somebody get him a towel! Listen, I want you all to understand I will not save you. Wow. What? Oh, swim thing? Are you a devil? Oh, you Sable! Oh, I was here for you. David! Mr. 
Mr. Jackson. Yeah? What do you love most about your wife? Well, uh, the things I love most about my wife, well, you know, she's a good person. You know, she's good with the babies, smells good, you know, most of the time. Uh, you know, she don't lie too much, you know? And a fool, well, you know that too, terrible. But, now my wife, she got a good bone. Oh, yes, sir. You leave one of them little T-bone steak? You best believe you're gonna be hard pressed to find that bone. Oh, yes, sir. Hmm, I got teeth like a dog and I don't lie too much. They still in my heart. You don't lie, take no compliment. That's your problem. Well, Mrs. Jackson? Well, Ethel is a hard worker and a good provider. He okay. is. Ethel is a good man. Uh -huh. He's just having a hard time accepting that I'm at my sexual peak and I want to explore these hiding feelings. Oh, come here. Now you need to hush. No, I don't need to hush. You need to hush. This lady's here to help us. Now, Dr. Masters, I'm tired of being at home. I am. I'm like a flower and I'm blossoming inside a cage and I want to be free. I want to be set free. But Ethel here, he won't let me. I want to explore new things, meet new people. I do. It, he just can't accept that I'm changing. I like it. I think it's beautiful. Well, it is beautiful. Change is also inevitable. But sometimes with change comes complications. Well, I don't care what you say. There's just a way a classic Christian woman's supposed to act. I mean, Doc, you need to see the little seedy things that this woman sings to my phone. That's sexist. So I'm sexist in my hood. That's what she calls it. Sexting. I don't even know what that means. Well, that's what it is. I'm saying sexual things and I'm texting it to your phone. That's sexting. I mean, if we can have a black man for president, why can't a Christian woman explore sexually with her husband? What's wrong with that? I mean, we ain't in Jesus' name. Ooh, okay, well, now see, you, you got one more time. Okay, stop, Jason. You know best. I love Jason. Ms. Jackson is only expressing some of her desires in new ways. Mr. Anson. My wife, well, she's special. She's special. And the sex, the, the sex is amazing. I'm like, when she steps up into the bedroom, woo, she like does a spin, and when she stops, she has a cape on and an SP on the chest, and she stands just like this. SP? What's the SP? It stands for <laughs> super. Oh, no, no. Will you please control your wife? Mrs. Anson? Um, <laughs> well, clearly my husband's special too. Um, and what can I say? Who wouldn't love him? He's a beautiful man. Um, we've been together for almost 16 years now. And we're high school sweethearts, and we just never parted. Well, are you talking a little bit? Yeah. Well, that fits your health goal. Let me ask you this. Why do you think it took your husband 15 years to marry you? Seems a damn fool. Hey. Hey, we got married when the time was right. When the time was right for who? Mrs. Jones, tell me why you love your husband. I guess you can't blame him for trying. But then again, how many times are you going to get to the finish line just to lose? That's how I feel about my husband. He's a good second place finisher. Mrs. Jones, this is actually the part where you say something positive about your husband. Mrs. Jones. All right. When we met, I was just getting out of a bad relationship and had my son, Aaron, when his father was killed four years ago. David adopted him and changed his name to his. At the time, we were paying $6,000 a month in child support and- Good God. David never complained. Most men would not have been that understanding. And for that, I will always love him. Mr. Jones, tell me why you love your wife. Sable is good at everything she does. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, but deep down inside, she's loving, she's giving, she's thoughtful. Mm. Deep, deep, deep down. And she challenges me to be. It's okay, you can tell her. She challenges me to love stronger and, and to love harder. Love gives unselfishly. You know what? Let me let me show you what I mean. Ladies, would you would you follow me, please? Hey, okay, come on. Hey, I say we leave now before it gets any uglier. You can't get any uglier. You got us up in here laying all our business up on this table. Well, that just ain't natural. 
Another thing, it ain't nobody's business how messed up your marriage is. I don't care what she say. Go ahead, go to the clip. Let's come on, let's, uh, um, what you waiting on? Come on. Look, you can leave if you want to, but my marriage is in trouble and I need help. Yeah, but we can't leave if you stay. You signed the same contract I did. We have no choice. No, we got a choice. Okay, look, they can't take what I don't have. I didn't sign up for this. Exactly. Let's go. What's wrong with me? me. <laughs> Ah, still here, I see. What a surprise. Well, at least one man would have been running down the street trying to get out of here by now. Anyway, while your wives are preparing, I want you to take a look at these booklets. I want you to look at page two. While your wives are preparing, I want you to fill out 20 things I love about my wife. Yeah, did you say 20 things? Yes, 20 things. And remember this. Never let anything distract you. Focus on your wives. Okay. All right. I can't stand her. What, what kind of doctor outfit is that right there? You, they, there ain't no doctor shoes. Just start right in. 20 bikes? That's enough of that. Uh, the place looks clean to me. Why is the money there? Okay, Jenny, thank you. Gotta be fine. <laughs> easy it is to get distracted. Ladies, you may enter now. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Right in front of your, your men, please. Love starts with humility. Thinking of others before you think of yourself. So gentlemen, your wives will be washing your feet and preparing you for a wonderful erotic night of love. Ladies, Sable. Sable. Thank you. Ladies, your men work hard. Give back to them. If you don't know, one woman's trash is another woman's treasure. Very nice. Now ease his troubles away and strip him of his anxiety. Ow, Sable. Okay, really. Make it intimate, make it erotic. Very nice. Make it special. <laughs> On your questionnaire, you ladies share with me that you wanted to add something extra special to your sex life. So, now that you've met his needs a bit, I'm sure he'll be much more willing to meet yours. Very nice. So, Mr. and Mrs. Anson, I asked Mrs. Anson to bring something extra special tonight. 
So, look in the goodie bag, see what you brought. Go inside. Mm -hmm. What is this? It's a book. Yes, it is. It is called Love Language, and it is going to teach you that communication can be very, very intimate. There's questions and games, and you guys are going to be amazed all night long. So well, you're, fun. You're, you're going to love it. I know, but, but, but I, don't, I don't want to talk. Oh, uh, you know, I want to be... No, 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 I know about that. Yeah, yeah, there'll be plenty of time for that, I promise. Yeah, no, enjoy well, that book. But it's a book. Yes. I can't, I can't do anything with this. You can. can oh, can I get a banana? Oh, baby. A rope. It's a book. Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Take a look in the goodie bag. I asked Mrs. Jones to bring something very special for tonight. Okay. I figured since we were going to be here, you needed this. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Let's get it on. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Jackson. Yeah. Sure. I'm you excited might. about your night. Yeah, you okay. we excited. Take a look at that goodie bag. Okay. What you got for me, buddy? I know you got something good for me, don't you? Oh, come on, I'm at the white. Come on, come on. You see my baby's got for me? Oh, hell no. Echo, what? It's not for you, it's for me. You you go get it, go get it, go get it. Echo. Oh, good Lord. Your mama bring you, I like what you bring me. Open your mouth. What you gonna put in my mouth? Oh, just open your mouth. It's a problem. Oh, you gotta tell me what you put in my mouth. Just don't help it. You know. Um, look, put it back. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, just, oh, oh. just, just. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ever can't you just do one thing for me? One thing? I do a lot of things. In fact, I did a whole lot of ungodly things here tonight in the barn, in the bathroom, in the kitchen. I mean, don't call us not ungodly. We are married. Why don't you love me no more? Look, what do you want, Camille? I mean, this is who I am. It's who you marry. Now, I love you, but I ain't fit to touch. Now, what happened to you? Okay, where's all this coming from? I'm alive. I what? When the kids are almost all grown, you're going to work all day, and it's just me. And one day I found myself, I was cleaning up the house, and when I was done, I was like, okay, what's next? And so I just started to get into me and to figure out what I like and what I want to do and what turns me on. And you just don't have to deal with the fact that women are complicated creatures, and you just got to deal with it. Well, I don't like complications. I like simple. And you've always been simple, man. Wow. This ain't nothing for the devil. That's what this is, trying to break up my happy home. And I rebuke you, Dennis. No, you ain't nothing but the devil. Why don't you rebuke your own self? Woman, now you know you're going too far. Let me tell you something. I don't watch my daddy work for 40 years at that steel mill with pennies. I can still see him coming home with his hands bloody. And my mama was always right there to take care of him. Tell you something, I learned responsibility from my father. But without my mother, I wouldn't have learned nothing about family. And you gotta trust me, girl, family is everything. I love you, girl. But I ain't gonna sit there and let you put our family at risk behind these little old newfangled fancy things you got going no. in your head. No. I'm not putting our family at risk. You are putting our family at risk. I am your wife. You are my husband. You are supposed to support my dreams, no matter what. Or you just leave me out there all alone. Now, things change. People change. Feelings change. Sexual desires, they change. And if you just open up your eyes, you would see that, but you won't because you're just an old stubborn mule. Camille. Oh, 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 good Lord. Come yeah, it's the devil making you do this. Ethel, you need to step up your cookies or they gonna cry. What does that even mean?
god. You scared me. So I was thinking maybe we could smash your phone. Daniel! Seriously, my god! <laughs> is, this, is this what I've become to you? Some little plaything? What's wrong with that? Well, if you be my plaything, I'll be with you. Oh, baby. You just grow up! Well, girl, I'm a child because I like to have sex. Oh, you knew I liked sex when you married me. Yeah, but I didn't marry you for sex. I mean, Daniel, do you even know who I am? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. I know everything about you. Oh, yeah, really? Yes. Okay, what's my favorite color? Orange. Wrong. What's my favorite movie? Marsha, come on. What is it? It's the one about the couple lost on the island. Um, no pad, something. Wrong again. Do you even know why I started my own business instead of taking that job at a PR firm in Seattle? Yes, it's because that's what you want. Why do you love flowers? No. I don't love flowers, Daniel. I love you. I mean, I have stood by your side through everything. And what have I become to you? Some little piece of meat? What was that empty crap that in there? That was a joke. I was just oh, playing yeah. with that. Look, I started my own business so I could make my life more flexible to support your dreams, not mine. But I thought your business and our marriage was your dream. Hey, hey come on. Hey. Hey, you're my co-pilot. You're my partner. Come on. No. We're not partners, Daniel. We're not even friends. Wait! Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, you, you're taking this too far, man. No, you wait. This is it, okay? This is our last chance. Can't you see? You're losing me. Wait, wait, Marcia! I want everyone to focus. Focus on marriage. Focus on the person you fell in love with. Focus on why you fell in love with them. I want you to think about them and I want you to see them in your mind. I want you to keep your heart open. Mr. Fable, close your eyes for me. Thank you. Remember why you fell in love with your mate. See them in your mind. Feel them in your heart. Can you? Oh, I'm sorry, everyone. I want to introduce you to my husband. This is Dr. Timothy Masters. Oh. You can call me Dr. Tim. That's right. All right? So we don't have any confusion. Okay, why are we here? Uh, to eat. To save our marriage. Marriage. You, you don't even know if you have a marriage yet. That's right. Marriage isn't I do on Saturday and I won't on Sunday six months later. So, wives, please blindfold your husbands. It's about teamwork. And sometimes it's as simple as making a sandwich. That's right. Husbands, your wives are going to lead and direct you on how to make that sandwich. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. Okay. And reach for the braids, right? Reach, braids. This is so stupid. You want to eat, right? It was red to the right and to the left. Do it there. Yeah. 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 Can we get some other lettuce? We don't actually eat this kind of lettuce. What? It's green lettuce. 
no, we do in diet, but you should all remain. This is this is ice for We don't okay. have ice. Put some tomatoes on my plate. Tomatoes. Daniel, stop. Make the couch. Make the sandwich. Daniel, stop it. Stop. My idea is to be idiots. Put the tomatoes on the plate. So what you do with that? Those are the roses. Red. Why are we in a barn? Because when marriage gets complicated, you need to simplify it. Man, woman, God, earth, the way it used to be. No computer, no phone, no media. Uh, Mr. Anson, yeah. what do you think of children? It's about baggage. Really? So you don't want children? Oh, hell no. No, why, why would I want all that responsibility? All that screaming and noise? Ah, it's, it's like embarrassing. Embarrassing? It's humiliating. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm not going to put a baby seat in my sports car. Uh, Miss Miss Anson, you you seem surprised. You you didn't know that those were your husband's views on children. No, I thought he loved children. I mean, he was always so good with his nieces and nephews. Well, how do you feel about family? I think family's beautiful, with the right person. What does that mean? Nothing, Daniel. Let's stay right here with you, Mrs. Anson. Mm -hmm. What do you think of sex? Sex is good. Oh, it can be. Good. And sex is great. <laughs> great. I mean, good, good. He needs to say, how do you think you describe food? Obviously, if her views are not the same as yours, um, maybe you're not as good as you think. <laughs> I, mean, I don't mean to brag, but um, if, if the NBA press was allowed it to my bedroom, oh, God. Mm -hmm, I would be voted MVP year after year after year. You know, um, Dr. Timothy, please. <laughs> Sex is fine. Can we please go on? Hold on, hold on, hold on one second, Miss Anson. Uh, Miss Anson, do you even know what your wife likes sexually? Hmm. Sure, I do. She likes me. That's why she calls me daddy. I call you daddy because you asked me to call you daddy. <laughs> no, no, I, you said you like. You, you said you like calling me daddy. You remember we watched that movie one time? No, no, you told me that you like it when I call you daddy. You know what? Why don't you ask her what she likes? I know what she likes. No, don't tell me what you think she likes. Actually, ask her. What do you like? I like it when you kiss me. Passionately. Well, kissing is just to get the girls ready. I do not keep you ready. No, you don't, Daniel. I am rarely ready. Why do you think I have a two-pound tube of lubricant on our nightstand? Uh, TMI. No, that's just too much my Christmas. It's my not, that's just too it's not our turn to talk. You know, no, and you know what? I don't even like that stuff. It's cold and it's chemical. And you know what else I don't like? I don't like watching porn when we make love. It's disgusting. <laughs> you know what? I hate, I hate those leather boots and these, these stink and G-strings. I hate G-strings. I mean, seriously, who wants to walk around with a piece of string up their butt all day? And the oils? Don't even get me started with the oils. I feel like I should be laid out in a skillet and fried or something. Our sex life has become a series of two-minute quickies, and I want passionate, deep lovemaking with roses and, and music and candles like we used to do. <sighs> Ooh. Um. Why are you putting this up right now? Is this is the first time, Daniel. I do, but you don't listen. Mr. Anson, you are lost. Your wife is living in a hellish anonymity, and you're supposed to be together on this. And Ms. Anson, your responsibility is equal in that you have to ask him for what you want in a way that he understands. That's true. A closed mouth doesn't get fed. And tell him what you don't like. Hmm. Marriage is about compromise. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jackson, sex, what do you think? Oh, uh, filthy. I mean, just filthy. You see, in the Bible, no sex is just to make babies, right? You know, but if I had another way to make some babies, oh, I would, I would never have no sex. What? Really? Well, it's simple. Just think about all the disgusting things that people do with their mouths, their hands, their little filthy things. I mean, it's like they watch Animal Planet and try to bring that mess into their home. But see, it's not for home. It's for the jungle. That's why it's jungle stuff. Oh, uh, Ethel, no. Ethel, just shut up. You watch, you just you watch that show. I do not watch that show. I Mrs. Not Jackson, watch that show. you're missing out. Sex is God's way of giving us a beautiful experience while enjoying the miracle of conception. That is true. Everything that happens to a woman's body during this process was beautifully orchestrated. I mean, the way her body welcomes you with warmth, mm. the way her hormones release. Mm. At the right, right, right moment, the 
right touch, her body just explodes with, you know, pleasure. You have a beautiful, vivacious woman to explore, and she is all yours. Amen. And what could be disgusting or, 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 or filthy about that? You just don't understand. Mrs. Jackson, what do you think? I think sex is wonderful. And I'm afraid that I probably will never know just how wonderful it is because Ethel here, he still makes me close my eyes. When we make love, it's in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Stop saying everything ain't in the Bible. He said that he wants me to close my eyes because when we make love, it makes him feel like people are watching him. And I say, people are watching you. It's me. It's my eyes. I'm the people watching you. <laughs> Ms. Jones, what's so funny? An orgasm is simply the contraction of muscles and the release of fluids. You two are romanticizing something that's purely mechanical. Use it for what you need and move on. Really? And what do you use it for? Whatever's necessary. Okay, okay. Uh, let's, let's take it in a different direction. Uh, Mr. Jones, um, what has your wife done to, to hurt you? Uh, that's unnecessary. I mean, you can't change the past. Exactly. You can't destroy the future by not dealing with it. That's a good point. <sighs> well, I would, I guess what is when we got divorced. Oh, okay. God. Are you serious? When were you married before? About a year and a half ago, uh, Sable's Sable father became sick, and it was obvious that he was going to pass. So. OK, you have no right to discuss my business in here. Oh, no, he has every right. Please continue. When it became obvious that Sable's father was going to die, and Sable and his sister were going to inherit a large sum of money, Sable asked me to divorce her and then to marry oh, her again. Please. But this time with a prenuptial agreement because the will stipulated that she was single. I, I knew that it was a lie. What? That fool is Christ. Well, I didn't want her to think that I was marrying her for her money. I wanted her to know that I was a man. I, I didn't need her money. But you did. Well, where's the money now, Sable? Because I take care of this family, me. Uh, Mrs. Jones, why didn't you tell me you were married before? Because it's none of your business, really. Oh, no, it is absolutely my business when you ask for my help. Uh, that's your quintessential error. I didn't ask for your help. Okay, I'm, I'm done with this, okay? This little barn shit. Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones! No, 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 no. Let, it, let it go. It's okay. You know, you can't keep running from your problems. Do you want your marriage, Sable? I'm here, aren't I? Are you? Because it seems to me like you're just going through the motions. Problem is, I just can't figure out why. Bravo, doctor. You realize you don't know everything. Well, I know this. You're hiding something. And every secret that is born in the dark eventually comes to light. I hope you remember that. You got anything harder than that? I'm afraid not. Beggars can't be choosers. Glass of wine? Uh, no, thank you. Yo, man, even Jesus drank wine. <laughs> you crazy. Hmm. 48 hours left. What are you guys doing? Just trying to drink your problems away? Hey, give it a rest already. Hmm. Well, I like the rest when the work is done. You see, I don't think you guys really understand what it takes for my wife to put this together. You're supposed to be doing your self-reflection exercises. And I look in the mirror. Hmm. And I like what I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny. What about you? You like what you see? Get dressed. We're going on a field trip.
the hell is this? It's your reflection. Your wife's a beautiful lady. Let's go upstairs. Reflections? I don't see no mirrors. What's he talking about? husband dated 15 years. Will he actually marry her? Yeah, but wow. no, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> hey, hey, you don't have to explain anything to me. As long as you're happy. Happy. We're working on that. Damn. Damn. <laughs> That's supposed to be. See, all the good men out there trying to find a good woman, they can't. They win all the dogs. <laughs> no, it's not like that. I wouldn't say he's a dog. He's, he's <laughs> Tell you what. what? Come, on. Come, on, come on, come on, come on. I ain't gonna bite you. Come on. Okay. Come on. Come on. I'm going right here to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the phenomenally talented and oh so sexy Mr. Tony Black. <laughs>
not fun when it happens to you, is it? Tasha. Two one three five 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 eight three two four. Danielle. Three two three five 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 three five four seven. Denise. Eight one eight five 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 four seven six zero. Do I need to go on? Beautiful, you have such a Thank great you. voice. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh. The pleasure is all mine. Oh, hey, 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 get your, oh, oh, oh. Damn. get your hands up. Hey, get your hands up from the wire. I don't see her complaining. Step. Step. I'll step. Thank you. Bye. Oh my god! you some lemonade. It's one o'clock in the morning. Well, we're in the country. Isn't that what country people do? We're an hour out of LA, David. Well, for the sake of this lemonade, we're in the country. Do you have any um, secrets? We all have secrets. Is that healthy? I mean, could that conceivably be why we're in such a bad space? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Did you put oranges in this lemonade? Yes.
All right, all right. It's obvious that you two love each other. Yeah, yeah. But there is uh, some existence here that I don't understand. This weekend is about being open. And if you can't do that, there's not much hope for you. Hope? Bobby, what's she talking about hope? Uh, we don't need no hope. We mad. Said I do, and that's that. And I ain't no leaving. I ain't no creeping. And I ain't no divorce. We are family. And we always gonna be a family. That's right, that's right. There's nothing strong enough to tear us apart. That's right. All right. Yeah. Tell me. You're committed, and that's good. Mm -hmm. But not good enough. <laughs> Mr. Jackson. I'm a man. You can tell me. What are you afraid of? Afraid? Yeah. <laughs> nah, I ain't afraid of anything. What you talking about? Why don't you want your wife to go to work? Yeah. Um, well, since you brought it up, yeah. uh, I guess I, I just don't want her to end up like all them other independent women. You know, I don't think they do. What women? Yes. What women? Why, baby, I ain't want to say no names. You know me. But, you know, y'all know the type. The types got them out there getting breast implants, you know, reading books on feminism, okay? <laughs> Walking up and just leaving their husband. Telling them things like they don't even need money. Now, that's just the devil. Well, I don't see anything wrong with women being independent. Yeah, yes. Well, I'm sure you don't. No. Because, see, obviously, you, you running all this right here. And your husband. Well, no offense, Mr. Dr. Whatever. It's yes. just, see, look, all I'm saying is I don't want Michael Manning to be nothing like that right there. Mm -mm. No, I ain't having nothing like that. Mm -mm. I'm not, not going to be nothing like that. I'm not going to be like that. Well, that's, that's what they all say, right? Yeah. Until they make themselves a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Then, they don't need you to take them to get their nails did. You know why? Because they hop in the car, drive themselves on down there to get the nails did. See, now, what kind of devilishness is that right there? Yeah, I'm a man. I got to drive my wife. But that's Timothy. Do you see what kind of backwards-minded stupidness, foolishness that I have to deal with? Do you see? He don't know a good thing. Don't know a good thing. It just ain't right. No, you just ain't right. Look, I have given you 22 years, 22 years of my life, and not one day have you missed all your needs being met, have you? And I shouldn't have, because you know what? This is what you said you was going to be, and it's what you should be until you die. I mean, why are you going to wait till now? And want us over? You see, see, I've been buying booze. Listen, I will meet your needs every day and still have a part-time job, but I will be much happier. That's all I'm saying. Yes, have. Oh, okay. Well, see, ain't nobody caring about your happiness, girl. No, sir. No. Why don't you try being a wife first? Yeah, and then worry about your little low happiness. Okay, hmm? Mr. Jackson, do you really mean that? Oh, yes, sir. You're damn skippy. I'm a husband first. I don't care about no, I don't have no happiness. I'm sitting there, Anna. You know what? You know what? Just shut it up. I don't like to deal with that woman. Well, you steal my wife. Oh, baby. Oh, oh, this ain't nothing. Oh, good lord. Come I'm fine. Write something nice. Hey, come here. Come here. You don't even have a Bible. Why am I talking? Baby, come here. We are not making much progress. I think we need to try something uh, a little more drastic. A lot more drastic. I mean, what? Is you got a Bible? <laughs> we need one. <laughs> I need a Bible right now. <laughs> uh, what could they possibly be talking about? Man, who knows? I just can't wait till tomorrow so we can get out of here. I don't get you guys. Why get married if you're not willing to work it out? <laughs> Can you believe in me? I mean, really? Um, who died and named you Jesus? I'm just wondering. Look, I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. No, he's right. Sorry to interrupt your dinner. I'm Robert. Robert, how are you? Okay. I'm Robert. Listen, guys. I was in the same predicament as you guys about a year ago. Well, so tell us how we can get out of here. Are you sure you're ready? Yeah, just fat me, Gracie. Think about why you're here. Think about where you are. This is your last chance to save your marriage. Uh, my marriage doesn't need saving. 
Is that what your wife thinks? I wonder who that is they're talking to. That would be Robert. He's my husband. And you are? I'm Leah. I was exactly who we ladies are now. Defensive, scared, lost in a ball of emotion. Uh, excuse me, are you another counselor here? No, not really. I was about to lose my marriage until Dr. Master saved us. Is it just remotely possible for me to quietly get through my dinner? That's all, just asking. That's just rude. Why don't you ladies join me in the media room? I guess not. Fellas, listen to me. <gasps> For real? Okay. You know what your problem is? Y you really think your dope just don't stink. I never said that. You didn't have to. You know, your mess just ain't out yet. But like a like a fat lady to a buffet, let me tell you something. It is coming, partner. Ooh, trust me, it's coming. Yeah. He's not the enemy. You are. Why don't you guys come join me in the media? See what I'm talking about. I'm the enemy? What the heck? Come on, man. See, here we go. More, more, more drama. Gentlemen, please take a seat. Um, excuse me, where's Dr. Masters? Sit down. I blamed my husband for his mistakes, but truthfully, it was my fault just as much as it was his. Thank you for saying that. But um, really, in a marriage, you have to be responsible for each other. We asked you all to write down your thoughts. Where's the first one? My wife doesn't understand. Who wrote this? Oh, I don't know. That wasn't me. One of every single time. She doesn't understand how hard it is, you know? How hard what is? How hard it is to be this guy that everyone wants to remember, but I want to forget. I'm a has-been. And every time I go to sell insurance to some person's home, I feel like someone's just plunging me in the heart with a screwdriver. Okay. Have you talked to your wife about your feelings? I just don't want her to see me as a failure. I know you're not a failure. But you have to stop treating me like it's my fault that you didn't get into the NFL. I never treated you like that. Yes, you did. But I just thought... I thought he didn't love me. You mean he didn't love you the way you deserved to be loved? Oh, how can you say that? You, you don't know us. Oh, calm the hell down. You know, okay. Daniel's right. I mean, he's not all bad. Can be very, very considerate. Not all bad. Mrs. Anson, defending him is never going to work. Confront the issue head on. Talk to him. Not all bad. Well, well, well. Maybe, maybe I will always be the guy who almost made it in your eyes too. Hmm. It's not what I mean. Daniel. We're gonna move on. Okay. I wish my wife would be more understanding and thankful of what we do have, rather than always complaining. Most people would love to be in our shoes. Which one of the husbands? That's me. Really, David? You think I have nothing to complain about? Hmm, let's see. Our home is being foreclosed. The kids' tuition is due. We can't even answer the damn phone. You think I'm complaining? You haven't heard me complain. I'm doing the best I can. You haven't even offered to help. It's not my job. You're the provider. So we have to buy a smaller house. So what? I mean, it's still big enough for our family to live in. We have some money problems, but it's not like we're going to starve. We're together, and that's all that matters. That is not all that matters. I have worked too hard for this lifestyle, and I'm not going to let you ruin it. 
and I'm certainly not going to take care of another grown-ass man. You work too hard? Boy, you are one selfish, crazy lady. You know that? Why can't you just be grateful for some of the things that you have? Okay, that's what I suggest. Hey, excuse me, and who are you? This isn't your business. Hey, 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 you might have to just want to take off. Okay, hey, 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 hey. Stop, stop, stop. Sit down. 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 Focus. Listen, people, we all live and breathe the same air. Right. You have to fight for your marriage, not each other. You can't do this alone. This is the time to face your fears. Come on. Marsha, what are you afraid of? I'm afraid my husband doesn't love me. Say it. This is ridiculous. Fine. We're not going to force you. Camille, what are you afraid of? Um, wait a minute. Ethel, I'm afraid you're not understanding the woman I'm growing into. Oh, Camille, I mean, I just... No, I just oh, you know, I, I've got one. And we're back. I'm afraid that you will always be a loser and not love me. Say it. That is not love me enough to win. I am so sick and tired of men and their broken promises. Be a man, David. Be a man. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> Take care of your family. That's I it. am a man. Oh. I am a man. I've been more man in your life than any man has ever been. Your father loved you with money, and your ex never loved you at all. Hey, Sable. Sable. Are you a wife or a jump off with the ring? It's up to you to decide. I'm out of here. David, David, David. Can I ask you a question? How much money do you think it would take to get you out of this predicament? Excuse me? How much money? A hundred grand. Dr. Masters wanted you to have this. She thought you might find it interesting. We made it. We almost didn't make it, but we did. Yeah, baby, you're right. If we did learn to communicate, we would have never made it through those dark moments like you're facing right now. Only you can change me. Okay? Good luck. It's not one one. This is the one. Listen, look, I need you to get me out of here. I'm being held against my will. Yes, I'm gonna leave you alone, okay? You just, you just, okay, yeah, trace this number. You know how they go. Perplexing to me. I don't need no more perplexing money. You see, you have a good wife. You, you, yeah, yeah. And a okay. beautiful family. Yes, yes. Beautiful family. Yes, yes. But yeah, you seem intent on messing it all up. No. What do you know? You know, see, most men in my sex group, mm -hmm. they complain about not getting enough. Okay. But you, you have a wife that's evolving okay. and wanting to give you more. Okay. I don't get you. I'll get you right now. <laughs> so what? Mm -hmm. Lean back just a little. Hold I'm trying. Oh, you. Uh, so, uh, you and your wife are the only couple that I know will make it. 
and have a chance of being happy. Come on! You better come get this man if I hurt him! I mean, really, really happy. Get him. No, no, no! You see that? You see that? See, this is, why, this, is, this is why I like this therapy. Because it has a way of clearing up the mind. It calls it, you know, revelation. You understand revelation. Uh, that's in the Bible, definitely. It's in the Bible. Yeah. So do you see what I'm saying to you? I can see a lot. Really? Yes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that we're right? Oh, yeah, yes, you're right. I'm wrong. You're right. You're right. About what? Mr. Doctor, whatever, you are right. I can... Do you hear that? Oh, I've been here. Here. Okay. That's okay. You're gonna be all right. Yeah. Oh, I tell you, we fight that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we we good. Yeah, we good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lowdown. Oh, no. oh, 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 I thought maybe you needed this. No, you're so sweet. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing but the best. My queen. Thank you. Mm hmm mm hmm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Tim. Mm -hmm. What is it? What's on my mind? Well, I was just thinking. Remember how last year we said that that would be the last one? Oh, come on, I don't need this right now. I don't need to talk about the focus and everything. That's wonderful. I'm just saying. I know what you're saying. Do you? Yes, I do. But do you remember what we said? I'm listening. Just one. That was our goal to save marriage one at a time. Mm -hmm. Remember that? You said it with me. Mm -hmm. But what happens if that marriage becomes our marriage? Oh, come on. All I'm saying is that at some point, you... Me and my family are gonna have to come first. Okay. Listen, I know this is not easy, and I appreciate it. I do. I do it for you because I mm -hmm. love you <laughs> and I need you. Look at me. All right? Mm -hmm. You know what I wish? What? I wish there were two of you. Don't mm. you? Mm. I know you do. Mm. Nah, <laughs> one of you is enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, that might be interesting, you know, to me. Yeah. Yeah, that might be kind of freaky. That's fine. Right. Good morning. We're now at the point that my wife likes to call confrontation, isolation, which means that this is your last day and your last chance. One of you may not make it. It's up to you to decide. Good luck. So whatever you do, don't leave these seats until you have a resolution. Mr. and Mrs. Hanson, everyone else, please follow me. Jill, would you hang behind?
Alrighty. Um, when? And how? Doesn't matter, I'm not keeping it. So, well, 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 well. don't worry. We need to talk about this first. You, you, just, you just can't just decide. Why would I want to have a child with someone who doesn't want children? Sorry. I'm a bit too flirtatious and, and, and disrespectful, but that's only because I just What? I just I just didn't feel like Star was good enough for you. I chose you. I love you. I married you. <sighs> okay. You know, I admit I, I blamed you for not knowing things I wasn't saying. <laughs> but look at us. each other. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Yes. Is it a boy? <laughs> My dear girl. <laughs> experience new things, new challenges, that's all. Maybe I just don't see what the big deal is. I mean, why can't things just stay the same? Because life just don't stay the same, Ethel. And if you don't embrace my growth, you're going to miss out on the opportunity as a woman to grow me into. Maybe all these new things just breaking my nerves, you know. I'm, look, you know I love you, right? But... If you go on growing into this new woman you talking about, with these new fangled ideas and fancy things, girl, I bet you just gonna end up leaving me behind. I can feel it. You a fool! What? Are you crazy? Don't you know you're one of the reasons why I'm growing? I'm easy. Yes. You have provided a beautiful life for us. 
And yes, I've contributed some, but now I want to contribute in different ways. Okay, you want to just contribute, okay? Well, you know, that's, that's a good thing, I guess. Uh, okay, but, buddy, do you think we can just compromise? I mean, maybe you can just start on working a few hours a week, okay? And just see how it goes. Let me, let me ease into this thing. This is good for me, buddy. I need some help with this. Can we do that? Baby. My boo, come here. Mm. Let's talk about our family. Mm. Uh, you know, baby, uh, I do have to admit, I'm a little curious about something you know, that I can learn. Oh, you have no idea what you're in store for. Aren't you? Yeah, oh, that was enough room in the back seat of that car. Come on, back seat of the car. Do you ever regret it? Regret what? Do you ever regret marrying me? No, I don't regret it. I... You just, you just can't do it, can you? Do what? Be honest with me. You just can't be honest with me, can you? Can you? Don't change the subject, baby. Answer the question. We're supposed to face our fears. I'm not afraid of being honest. I just don't want to hurt you. No. Oh, well, that's done great for us so far, huh? Yeah, you gonna criticize me again? I'm not your pincushion, Sable. Yes. I regret my decision of being with you. Now we're finally getting somewhere. What else? What else do you regret? I regret marrying someone so shallow. I regret marrying someone with conditional love. I regret that I married someone with unresolved issues in previous relationships. Is that what you think of my son, Aaron? As remnants of my unresolved issues? You weren't concerned about my unresolved relationships when we first met, were you? That's not the same thing. How is it different? You knew I was with Keith, yet you were still sneaking over having sex with me in our bed. We were broken up. You said that you were just there because of Aaron until you could find a place. It was already over. Is that how you justified it in your mind? Sleeping with another man's woman? Do you know how that made me feel? I'm sorry, I didn't... There you were, David, screwing me. And you don't even love me. Come on, Sable, what is this, a joke? Please sit down, Mr. Jones. You never mentioned that before. Now you want to question my love for you? Keith wasn't half the man that I am. See, this is why you don't get involved with damaged goods. You're a complete waste, just a money-hungry... Keith was a lot of things, but he never lied to me. You're a liar, and you're selfish. Selfish? When I would pick up your son from your exes, I had to look at that man in his face with his sarcastic smile and listen to him say, yo, make sure you have him back by six, all right? I didn't ask you to do that. Just like I didn't ask you to adopt him. You did that on your own. I did it because I loved him. You did it because you needed a namesake. He already had a father. So that's what this is about. You were still in love with Keith? And what if I was? You have no idea how much I did for you. What I risk if I find out. If you find out what? If you find out what, David? It took me three years to find out you were shooting blanks. You need to get on the ground and thank God that someone killed Keith. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd have her calling someone to punch hit for you because you're sorry. You're sorry, and you're broke. You destroyed our marriage. You destroyed our marriage. 
As far as I'm concerned, we already have a marriage. So you know what I did? You did when what? I, when you I did what? a real man, you don't want to know. Oh, yes, I do. You might as well put it all on the table. <laughs> like your foreign bank accounts. 500 grand, Sable. You told me that you inherited $100,000 between you and your sister. Yes, I did. Oh, you thought I was going to blow my money on a doomed relationship? I'm no fool. Yes, you are. And you're also a liar. But here's one bit of truth that you recognize. You're a gold-digging fool. And I'm a damn good one. A damn good one. You should be good at something. You're not even a father. What did you just say? What did you say? What she's trying to say is, while you two were married, she was still having sex with her ex-husband. You see, as standard procedure, we check all of the medical records for the couples that attend this retreat, and when we checked yours, we found out that your blood type is type A, and your wife's is type A negative, which makes it impossible for you to conceive a child that's type B negative. <laughs> all these years? She killed you. Hey, Mr. Jones, violence is not the way to handle it. Did you? Listen, listen. You confronted Keith about the new child support orders, didn't you? I told them that he didn't need all that money and that he was robbing us. Okay. So what happened? Did he point his finger in your face? Did he tell you how good he was at making love to your wife? He said that Sable told him that we were having a problem, having a child. You had no right to tell him that. Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, David, what else happened? We began to argue. Right. He swung at me, so I grabbed him by his neck and threw him down to the ground. The next thing I knew, he was laying there lifeless. So I left. I didn't mean to kill him. What? You bastard! You bastard! You bastard! No, he was Stop destroying me! our marriage, and you were screwing him? How could you? Because, David, I made love to him every chance I could. When I opened my legs to him, David, he made me feel like a woman. Oh, God, he made me feel like a woman when he was sucking me and stroking me. He did things you never could. You know, I'd come home. I'd have his body on my lips. And kissing his dick. Well, he ain't for nothing now. I knew it. I knew it. Something was strange. It was something in his eyes. It was. It was the cockiness in his voice. I knew it was something strange. You know what? I'm glad I broke his neck. How does it feel now? I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. All right. All right. Wow. Yeah, desserts for the queen. Thank you, Royals. Did you, you make that for me all by yourself? Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. I made this afterward. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, well, I'm going to give you the first taste. How about, mm, how about mm, that? Mm. Delicious? Oh, that's delicious. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. It's a tough group this year, huh? Yeah, I know, but I think we stay away from it. I don't know about all that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, enough about work. Hmm? Now that you have me here all to yourself, hmm. what will you do with me, doctor? Hmm. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> but you know, the cleaning staff is still here, and I'm not trying to get caught again. Mm, but are you thinking what I'm thinking? What, the woods? Trees. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hope you stretched. <laughs> Always stay stretched. Me, you me, know me, that. Dr. Me. Masters. Oh, so Harry. glad I found you. Hi, hi. Uh, oh, oh, from, from, from last year? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, how can we be of service? Well, after my husband and I left your retreat last year, he decided that based on your advice, he should leave me, so... I know you'll be served today, but we thought it best that I personally hand deliver a copy of the summons myself. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't suggest that we do this. Oh, on the contrary, you did. Your exact words were, a good man is hard to find, and if she doesn't appreciate you, another woman will. And we found one that would. Are you ungrateful? Uh-uh, careful. 
Catherine Timothy. Because by the time I'm done, this entire house, this rowboat, the pond, the barn, all of it will be mine. Have a nice day. So, what does that make this? 10? <laughs> 11. That's what I thought. I'm going to toss that on the pile with the rest of them, right? <laughs> exactly. I so. thought we were going to, you know. Oh, yeah. Right. One, one banana. <laughs> Two bananas. Bring this one. I, I, I can figure out something interesting to do with this. <laughs> Open the door, tough guy.